now moving on to system structural properties. In this unit we have system structural properties that we're going to be looking at and we start off by looking at the subject of controllability. So that's the subject for this, this lecture. So to talk about controllability we usually start off talking about something called the transfer problem. In the transfer problem we're given a uh, linear time invariant system X dot, uh, X, and here we're looking at discrete time to begin with then we'll move on to continuous time. So here's our state equation with some initial condition and so the question is how do we find a control sequence u right, so this is how we define the sequence from 0 to, to n minus 1 u at, from 0 to n minus 1 where n is some finite number how do we find a control sequence that drives us from some initial state x0 to some final state x at time n? Okay, so that's our desired state. Sometimes we'll see x subscript d, sometimes we'll see x subscript f. Okay, so we can have it in a number of different ways. So our transfer problem. So here's the here's the solution to our different our difference equation. Notice it looks very similar to our solution for our differential equation because of the fact that we use the state transition ma matrix and the control map. Remember that the state transition matrix for a discrete time system is a to the power something, and the control map is actually this telescoping matrix that's like this. Okay, so we have uh, this, so this is our uh, solution to our state transition um, problem. And so the transfer problem now becomes Here's our control input. Here's our desired final state. Here's our initial state. And so we need to know when can I find a U to satisfy this equation. Okay? And so this is a linear algebra problem. And so the question is under what condition will this equation have a solution? And a hint is think range. So we have a mat so this is basically a matrix times our unknown. So when will this have an exact solution? It'll have an exact solution whenever this vec this is just a vector. Whenever this vector is in the range of this matrix. So that's the question. So the system with matrices A and B is said to be controllable or reachable. Sometimes you'll see that used in the in the uh, literature on the interval from T naught to n if the range of that matrix is all of our n. Okay, so if it's all of our n, then it's said to be controllable. Sometimes um, controllability has a slightly different implication, but this is the one that we're going to use. This is probably the most standard definition. So notice that this is equivalent to this matrix for some t being onto. That is, if I have range being all of our n, this matrix is onto. Whenever you have a matrix that is onto, there is, always exists a right inverse. That is, if I multiply this, the matrix times the right inverse, I get an identity matrix. Okay, so, so we have that situation. I'm going to use this right, right inverse here in just a second. So now I take this matrix, multiply by the right inverse, multiply by this quantity, and, and I set it equal to this. So when, when is this? And so in this case then, because of the fact that B times R is the identity, I get this equation. So V here is xd minus the state transition matrix times the initial condition. And so now u is all of this stuff, and so it's r times that. Okay. So I can solve this equation for u this way. And, and I've made use of the right inverse. Notice I can use any right inverse, which means that I can, in, in general, there are an infinite number of right inverses. And so I can get an infinite number of different control sequences this way, but all of them will give bring you to the right point. Okay, so we we took advantage of the fact that 
this matrix was onto, this control map was onto, and that the range was all of Rn. So theorem 22.1 says for n between k and l, so k is less than n, n is the order of the system. So if I have, if my A matrix is n by n, n is the, is the dimension there, k is less than n or less than or equal, l is greater than or equal to n, and what theorem 22.1 says is that the range of the control map from t naught to k plus t naught is contained within the range of uh, this, the, the control map up to time n, which is also contained within the range up to time l. So n steps ahead of t naught. This is l steps ahead of t naught. So again, l is greater than or equal to n. So, so notice here I get, I get containment here, but here I get equality between these two sets. So that's what this theorem says. And this holds both for linear time varying and linear time invariant systems. And so what this gives us is actually a controllability test. And it turns out there are a number of tests for controllability. So basically, notice that controllability for a system is really associated for a linear time invariant system with the matrices A and B. And so basically this says that the matrices are that the system with matrices A and B is controllable if and only if the range. Notice I'm going up to time n, steps ahead of t naught, if the range of this matrix is all of Rn. So this is a, this is, uh, we, de we defined the, the um, controllability as the range of this being all of Rn for some n. What we're saying is we can restrict our n, capital N, to little n plus t naught. So as long as we're going n steps ahead, little n steps ahead, then we we can define that. So I only need to look for n steps. I don't need to look arbitrarily large for arbitrarily large values of L, for example. Okay, so I only need to, to go up to n. Next we're going to talk about the control gramium.